Then we gotta we gotta kick and we don't kick it well and we don't kick it off well. You know, just we just didn't get off to a start and uh, it was probably that. But so you take some of that field position stuff out that I think kind of puts anybody on their heels. Um, and so once we kind of got through that, you know, I thought our defense battled hard. Our offense, you know, finally got into a, a little bit of a rhythm, and I thought it was awesome how we came out in the second half. And our offense just answered, answered. And I think that, you know, I think that made our, our defense um, not have to play quite so tight. Because they, you know, they got a lot of speed and they, they have a unique system there. Was there something unique just about special teams in general? Or was it just an, just getting off to a rough start? And that was it. It's one of those getting off, you know, we just didn't execute like we normally had been, you know, and a couple, couple guys. And, um, you know, I think that's kind of how it goes sometimes. But it was just... Yeah, it wasn't any scheme things or anything like that by any stretch. There was, if we talk about that early stretch, it appears there's a, a strength and consistency with your, especially defense in this case. But the other team had kind of every opportunity to grab a little momentum, make some hay there, mm -hmm. and the defense made it tough on them. Even when they scored, they made it tough on them. Yeah, you know, and that's what you, I think that's what you want out of, you know, your defenses. I think, uh, you know, there's too many good players out there these days. You're not just going to, you know, blanket guys and shut them down. Like, um, you know, we've had a couple of those type games, but, you know, I think you get in this league and you, you're just not going to have that. And so it's about slowing them down, containing them, making them earn things. You know, that's, that's the thing that I really want our guys to get in their head is like, you know, if they got to earn stuff, that just changes everything. And, and so I thought that's what was kind of going on there. Considering um, what Cal was doing offensively, to hold them to 27, 350. Was this maybe the most impressive defensive performance of the year by yeah. you? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if, if it was that. I thought it was good, though. I mean, it really was for, you know, you're kind of always holding your breath a little bit with Cal, you know, and they spread you out and they have those weapons and they have a lot of speed and just by the nature of that system and then they go fast and the whole time they're going to run a lot of plays at you. And so, I mean, I thought they played... I thought, I thought our guys, you know, on both sides, I thought they played really well. Um, I, I'm not sure if it was our best defensive, but it was good. You know, it really was. Um, yeah, I just don't think, uh, you know, unless you study the tape and all those type of things of what, what they're doing and how different it is from what you see, what that challenge is playing against those guys. So we were, we were really happy with, with how those guys competed. Jones had said that he was excited to, to match up with Chad Hansen just – given the numbers he's put up this year. Were you excited to see that too, just kind of considering how little how little action he's gotten in terms of quarterbacks throwing his way and, and knowing that they probably were going to? Yeah, I don't know if I went into that game like excited to, you know, see all these receivers, but I think that's awesome that, you know, our guys have that mindset and, you know, Sidney hadn't, hasn't seen a bunch of balls his way and just by the nature, you knew it was going to go his way. Um, and so it was really good to, you know, watch those guys compete against really good players, a lot of space, and like I said, I think they did a pretty good job. And then just back to the special teams again, for the kickoffs, you, you wanted those short like that? or was Oh, yeah, we, you know, try to move the ball around a little bit. I mean, it's always a, you know, cat and mouse game. And, um, you know, when you kick off a lot, like I've been saying all season, I mean, that's just, there's, there's some really good returners. And you watch the tape and you're like, yeah, this guy's, these guys hurt some people in field position, so you got to kind of move it around. And, you know, we're going to see the best I've ever seen played against this week for sure. So, you know, we'll see. What was Austin Stepp and John, Austin Joyner, on a couple of people yeah. in terms? What was going on? Yeah, that's all me. I mean, it's better, you know, they got to be coached better in terms of their communication and all that. And, um, yeah, we hadn't seen those balls kind of kicked into the gray area about who should take it and all that. And we obviously haven't worked on it enough, so hopefully we can get that straight. Chris, as far as the, their offense, it, it, I know I don't know if 74 yard, uh, plays was a season low for them, but one of 14 on third down. What was working for you guys yeah. to get off the field? It, that w it wasn't a season low. I think I think Utah really held the ball for them, but it was close. Yeah, because they they are one of the as we know one of the teams that runs the most plays in the country. Um, I don't. I don't think it was anything in particular. You know, I think it was our getting a little bit of pressure 
uh, on the quarterback. You know, we, we only got to him, sacked him one time, but we were around him a lot. And so he wasn't able to sit back there and just wait till guys could come open. And so, you know, I think it starts with getting a little pressure. And I, and I think our guys covered pretty tight. And so the combination of those two things, you know, it wasn't any one one thing in particular. And you look back, you know, after the game, you say, wow, is that, is that re really what it was? You know, didn't even really realize it was that good on third downs till after the game. So you kind of transitioned to USC a little bit with your first comments when you said a whole new set of problems. So what this Trojan team is a different animal than what we saw in the first part of the year. Yeah. What are you seeing from them as far as just the progress? Yeah, and I hope, you know, I mean, I, I want you guys to go watch tape, you know, because I think everybody just does minimal research and, you know, kind of puts it all USC. USC is right back to USC. You just watch the tape. This is across the board really good. Special teams, Coach Baxter did a great job. I mean, tons of talent like you'd expect USC to have. And now they're playing in rhythm on all three phases. And so, you know, I think it's easy when, you know, you play the first game against Alabama and you're still trying to figure out your guys and, um, you know, your quarterback and all those type of things. And so, you know, again, I, I'm just, you know, like everybody else, I, I haven't really watched USC until, um, you know, until last night and today and you put them on and start studying and you're like, okay, now you see why they're in this win streak. I mean, they're playing well. They got good players. They're well coached. And so, uh, you know, it'll be, uh, I'm just, you know, glad we're playing at home and it'll be a heck of a game. What stands out to you is Sam Darnold's strengths? Yeah, he's, uh, he's, yeah, I'm trying to think what stands out. You know, really good athlete. You know, he can move, he can run. Um, really strong arm. And, um, you know, he's an accurate thrower. Doesn't look like they're doing any less with him whatsoever. Um, you know, I think when a guy, you know, has a, you know, a year plus in the system, I know he redshirted, but, you know, he was obviously paying attention to what was going on. And then, you know, now he's, he's not really a freshman. You know, when you look at it, how many games he's played now and the things he's seen. So he's doing a really good job. You know, a lot, lot of, you know, then you couple that with, sorry about that, with the receivers, you know, it's like, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? It's not, you know, you got five or six guys. And, you know, I think their hard decision is, is trying to figure out, like, who should get the ball the most, um, whether it's a tailback or receivers. You started a uh, freshman quarterback yourself last year, and this is a redshirt freshman, but how do you look at how uh, Jake has matured? Do you see anything with Darnold in his first year of playing? It's hard for me to know about, about their situation. Uh, so your question? Well, just about the, 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 the risk you took in starting a uh, freshman quarterback and yeah. the payoff this year. Yeah. I mean, I told you guys last year, this had nothing to do with this year. You know, last year we were playing a guy that thought, give us the best chance to win. I mean, you know, everybody from the outside. Coaches don't, I mean, you, you got to figure it out now. I mean, look what so many people are going through right now. It's like, what gives you the best chance to win this season? It might be in two games or something like that. And that's what we thought about Jake last year. Um, and so I don't know what, you know, their mindset is in terms of, you know, their, their situation. But he's a good quarterback. Doesn't look like a, you know, a new guy in there by any stretch. When you were watching the, the tape this morning, did you see the, and I'm not even sure I saw it right, the, the, and I think it was a USC punt return. It was kind of a phantom. Oh, yeah. Where everybody swung to one yeah. side and yeah. the returner. Yeah. And it kind of worked. It didn't, I don't think yeah. it broke it for long. If, yeah. Have you seen that before? You've yeah. probably seen everything yeah. before. Utah did it to Oregon last year. Yeah. And they got a touchdown on it. So, you know, you get a directional kicker and, you know, the Dory fakes like he's going to get it. And the ball's really going over there. So they think it's a miss hit. And, they got about 40 yards on it. Yeah, pretty good. It's a kind of risky thing, though, right? Because the return guy's out there almost by himself, right? The, um, the, the blocker's kind of... Yeah, but you can fair catch it or not catch it. And, you know, it's kind of a, you know, trick play, fake out play. Yeah, it's a good play. You said this is the best return you've ever seen? He's the best that I've studied and all that. By far, the best. 
yeah. You mentioned kind of immediately after the game about looking forward to getting home, playing in a setting. Yeah. Um, how much does that stuff need to matter for you guys on Saturday with the crowd and just the environment and atmosphere? Yeah, I think it, I think it really matters. You know, I think when you're playing a really good team and, you know, it's going to be a close game, that, that matters for sure. You know, there's momentum swings and how energizing the crowd can be to our players. And, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I haven't – I don't remember too many games that I've been – around that felt like it is when we played Stanford, you know, it just that that momentum, that that force in the stands. And it's it's awesome. And so yeah, I'll be excited to hopefully get that going again. Bobby Petrino said, I think last week that he thought it was a shame that style points matter in college football when it comes to rankings and things like that. And I don't get the sense that you're concerned about that on game day, but do you feel like there are people out there who do look at scores and I have like no idea. You know, I think I heard the committee say that it has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. So that's the only thing I've ever heard. So you trust them. That doesn't, I, I don't even kind of, all we're trying to do is win a game. Yeah. You, you go back and look at some of the historical kind of pieces, like when you look at a, a November game with, with championship implications and, and a team like USC coming here, there have been some kind of classic moments with Washington and USC in that yeah. regard. You, do you ever, do you go back to that? Do you make the team aware of that to, to give them a sense of history or a sense of, of, of what, it, what it can mean? I think our guys know. I mean, um, you know how big a game this is. It's USC, all those type of things. I mean, everybody. And so um, I certainly wouldn't do it for uh, like thinking I need to get these guys more motivated and fired up. Um, you know, I think that's one of the things that, you know, maybe sometimes we're, we're too excited to play, you know. And so, I mean, I think about that, you know, this week. I mean, our guys study tape and they know good teams and good players. And so it's, it's never that thing where, um, you know, a coach can come in and, you know, trick the guys to get them. They, they kind of know. And so, I mean, they know like the coaches do. You put the tape on and you're like, okay, well, first of all, it's USC. But then you put it on, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. I know why they're winning now. You know, they're playing really good and they got that talent that they've always had. So no no plans to show them no, like the 1990 I game? Mean, or the, thing, the, the thing is hard about that is, is our time. You know, we just only have so much time with these guys and you just fly through your meetings and you try not to fly through them so you can really make points and stuff. And then to do, you know, I mean, I, I wish we had all day with them and, you know, bring out stuff like that and just for the uniqueness of the game and the history of football and the history of rivalries and all that kind of stuff would be kind of good. And, but I don't know, maybe I will now that you say it and, and thought about that. <laughs> About maybe uh, leading the team out in a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we yeah we don't have that history and tradition here, so we probably won't. How significant was that that win at USC last year? Just at time for what it did for your program, and I don't know what it did for our program. I mean, I really don't. It was such an awesome win for our guys, you know, because again. Everybody has tremendous respect for USC and what goes on down there. And, you know, with the team that we had last year, trying to figure some things out and figure out who we are and all those things. I mean, for our guys to go down there, I mean, that was really a, you know, they played super hard and, and then to, you know, win a hard fought game was, that was really good. But in terms of what it did and all that, I mean, we were still struggling. You know, just inconsistent, you know, even after that for a while. And it just took us a while to, you know, get into a groove. Um, Due to a, a few injuries, serious or other, now you've gone through a couple games with a, a few backups or theoretical backups have played. How do, you, how do you feel now at this point in the season about your ability to, you don't want to, but your ability to fill some holes like yeah. that? Have the guys been coming through for you? I think they have. Um, and you're exactly right. I mean, um, it's just going to happen every year. You know, there's just, there's no team. I mean, I don't know. You can, this would be a good study. Is there any team in America right now is playing and go, has all their guys? You know, you just like to think you're going to, but you just know you're not. And kind of along those lines, um, we're not going to get Joe Mathis back. We thought we would. Um, 
And so he's rehabbing, rehabbing, and everybody thinks it's just best if he got some surgery and got it fixed the right way. And um, so, yeah, you know, and so that's one of our guys right there that we thought would be down for a game or two and turns out to be a little bit different. And so the next guys, you know, fortunately, the next guys have been playing and they've been playing hard. And we've been getting meaningful reps and all that. And that's just kind of how it goes. That's part of it. You stress that from day one that those guys, one or even two tiers below, they, they have to be ready. You're counting on I mean, sometimes it's really even three, you know, as you go into your season. And so it really has to do so much with building depth, you know, as you go through this whole thing. Um, you just have to because you're just not going to play with all your guys. When was that determination made about Joe? Um, I think late last week. Foot surgery? Yeah, something on his foot, yeah. A setback as he was rehabbing, or did it no. just turn out to be? No. Yeah. I mean, there was, you know, he might have been able to rehab and get in there for, um, you know, some games down the road, but, you know, it's, um, you know, just between him and the doctors and all that stuff, just thought, you know, after rehabbing it for a couple of weeks, that I don't think he was going to feel real comfortable. You know, do it that way. So and if it, if the game's going to January, it would it's still. You know, there maybe, yeah. I mean, um, but not not with not with getting surgery. Yeah. What, what do you just make of the journey that he's been on? I mean, we all know about what happened, yeah. but yeah, just kind of. Yeah, he's had a lot. You know, he's had a lot of stuff football wise too, injuries and stuff, and it's. Um, you know, he's had a lot of things to weather, and he's done a really good job with it. And it's, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, I can't finish his senior year out here. I mean, football's really important to him, and he's such a, you know, good player for us and all those things. And, you know, I think all the things that he's been through, um, you know, on the field, off the field, you know, have put him in a position to handle this this one better. And I think he's really positive to get his foot fixed and, you know, try to keep playing. You feel good with at that spot or do you maybe move some guys around no we've been we've been doing what we've been doing you know and so I think those guys have been getting a lot more football and stepping up to the plate and playing Chris you've been um, you've had nationally successful programs before is it any different from you from a time management standpoint to deal with the attention that's coming with a top five program um you know, n not so much just because of kind of how how I am um, with that whole thing. I mean, we got to make time for it. It's really important, you know, for our program. We get all those things, but we also we have to do our job, um, you know, which is take care of these kids and study out how to game plan and and practice and all that. And you only have so many hours in a day. So, you, you know, you try to do, a, you know, maybe a couple extra things. It comes with the territory. But, you know, I always say this, and I mean, and it's a fine line, and I know it can really irritates a lot of people, but one of, one of you know, my responsibilities is, you know, protecting our players to make sure that they stay focused on what they need to stay focused on. And if, you know, our quarterback's running around doing 14 interviews a week, which he could easily do, that, that's not right for him. It's not right for our team. And so we, you know, it's, we try to think it out as whether it's me or, you know, some of our players and give guys, you know, access but also just the balance of, you know, all that stuff we talked about, that has an effect on guys. There's no question. I mean, you get, t you get worn out by it. You, you know, you start not cutting time on where you need to spend your time. And um, so, I, you know, I take that responsibility real serious on both sides. You know, try to give everybody what they need to have some access, but then also protect our guys to keep them, keep them looking at what they need to look at. Have you had to say no more than you ever have? No. Uh, uh not more than I've ever had. You know, I think at Boise they were always really intrigued with what the heck's going on over here, and so I got really good at saying no before I got here. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, uh, the last loss ASU. I don't know. I don't know. How we're talking about you having a conversation. As long as you're asking this question and we don't ask it next week, I'm good. Go ahead. What's the question I would ask? I don't know about ASU and starting like you know that that surrounding the conversation you have with Jake on the field after that game. And just kind of maybe you remember what that conversation was all about and kind of what it led to down the road first for him? Yeah, I, I, I don't remember that conversation. I, I kind of remember walking off the field because somebody said something about that. Um, you know, it's not any one thing, you know. It, it wasn't any one thing. 
And I, I really mean that, and I say that, you know, when I look back on that. I mean, I, those, those kids just, they just kept practicing hard, and they were, you know, I mean, it was just a tough, hard, you know, time. But when you look back on it, you're like, this, this was great. I mean, these, these kids really just didn't didn't back down. They just kept working. They kept the urgency like it just really mattered. Um, like every practice, all those things, you just felt that. And so I, I don't remember that, that, that what that conversation was. Um, but I remember them just fighting hard. And, you know, when you keep working hard in whatever you do, you're going to get some payoff down the road. The thing that we can never predict is when that is. How would you characterize this team's practice habits? Real good. Real good. Very focused, real good. Um, but I am interested to see how this thing goes this month because I think it's really hard, and we talked about this the other day with them, to keep practicing at a really high level when you have a lot of reps under your um, belt and some things are the same and some aren't. From everything, the fundamentals to let that go, to yeah, I got, I got this. You know, that's three of the worst words a coach can ever hear. Yeah, I got you. You know, yeah, I got you. And they mean that like, yeah, I got, but you know, it's like, it's not that same like, huh? Okay. You know, to have that renewed like, they better have it this week, you know, or it's going to show up. You say this month just because of just how much work they put into this point <laughs> I mean who wants to run out to practice tomorrow and really like practice super hard after you know all this time I mean it's hard for everybody but I think the special you know the special teams and special players can somehow kind of get that in their mind where it's like I'm good I'm uh, this is you know everybody gets everyone hey, I know everybody's going to be there with their best on Saturday but that's not what wins games you know it's what can be done now until then? Your, your tail packs, and you're used to sometimes three a game, depending on how the game goes. How much of that is part of your plan going into the game, and how much of it is somewhat influenced by how the game develops? Uh, kind of yes to both questions. You know, we have a plan. You know, who's we have certain groups and guys go in for that stuff, but then if somebody, you know, looks like they really have an extremely hot hand you might leave him in a little bit more so it's we have a plan but it's never like locked in like this is the only thing we're, do, we're doing and I think coach Bonifa does a really good job with that with those guys not really influenced by, this guy is kind of a style runner this guy's that style and we think the matchup might be a little bit. well a little bit a little bit you know but, but that's all kind of done during during the week you know in terms of plays and those type of things I mean there there is some of that mm-hmm with, uh, with Joe being out, can you talk a little bit about Benning and how he's been able to step up and, and kind of the game that he had against Cal? Yeah, and so I think those are really, like I say, meaningful reps. And, uh, you know, he's, um, you know, he's kind of new to that, you know, I mean, that, that position, and there's a lot there. Um, and so it's really good to, to have gotten him in the game, um, games in the past, and let him see things full speed against you know, good players. And, um, you know, I just, I think, um, yeah, it is going to be interesting this week because, you know, I think this line, this offensive line we're going to see is, is, is really, really good. Really good. And I don't say that a, a lot. You know, I think, you know, you can always find a couple good players in the offensive line and the rest of the guys are okay. And I think these guys across the board are really good players. Compare them at all with anyone else in the Pac-12, whether it's a Stanford or a Utah, or just in terms of their physical play. You know, there's some teams that we've, you know, obviously got some pretty good respect for in terms of how they play physical, and that Utah is a, you know, good line. But you know, again, I'm still, we're still in the process of studying those guys to really. But these guys look as good as anybody we've seen, uh, for sure. USC to their lowest yards and like. Six or seven yeah. years. What did they do well on Saturday? Yeah, they just like I said. I mean, I think they're, you know, they're, they're really just all starting on all sides, all phases. You know, you got these good players that are now starting to really figure out their system and what their coaches want, and so they're just playing hard and doing their job. I mean, they're really, they're gonna. You talked about somebody talked about making you earn stuff. You know, they're not. They don't give you stuff. 
They're not going to cut a guy wide open and all this space and get fooled with their eyes and those type of things. And so I think that's the difference. It's like they've kind of it's taken, you know, I mean, early on they're probably still moving some pieces around and maybe the scheme was new to some guys and it's different in practicing is the game. And so now they got that rhythm where they, they get it. They, they know what their coaches want with really good players out there. And that's what you're seeing. That's why they're getting, you know, we always look at guys. Are they, I mean, is the team's improving? Are they getting better? This is one of those teams. And just the last year, just getting the reps he's gotten late in the game. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's you'd like him to be able to get in and throw the ball more and play the game. And so we haven't got that done. But, um, you know, I think he's I think he's building skill. I think he's making progress. You know, you never really know till you put a guy in and those situations. But he's been awesome. And, you know, we challenge him all the time about – you know, you, it's just so easy sometimes. I, mean, I think the quarterback's one of the, the harder backup positions to play because it's there's not a lot of rotation going on there, but it can be one play, and it's like you got to go win, you, you know, you got to go do the job at this level that we expect. And so he studies hard and practices hard. You've had such success with your base defense. When you lose your leading sack, or does that is it just as easy to say next guy up like a, like a Benning, or do you have to make maybe fundamentally tweak some things or or blitz more like maybe you did against Cal or, or do some other things? Y yes, to all that. I mean, you know, we we run, we do what we do, but you you can't just say, hey, can this guy do what he did, and and so. It's that combination of doing what you do and then figuring out what these guys can handle and what they do well and tweaking things from there. It's always that.